I think we really like each other and we should start dating. N no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm confused. I, am I not communicating this right? Like, I, I... No, I hear you. I'm just saying I disagree. Do you like me? Yeah. Yeah, see, I really like you. So we should be a couple. <laughs> no, no. I, I have pl plans. What are your plans? So for Trainwreck, you met Amy Schumer for the first time when you were auditioning right. for, the, for the project. Yeah. What was that like? It was, it was strange. We, they had us, uh, I auditioned once in LA. I thought I bombed it. I thought it was bad. And, and then uh, they called me back out to New York to screen test with Amy. And, um, you know, that was the, you know, the screen test when we actually kind of got to know each other a little bit. And then that night, Judd Apatow took us out, the director, he took us out to uh, dinner and just um, walked, kind of took us on a date. And it was very strange. You just sat and watched us eat. So, so what do you do to impress Amy Schumer on a date? What do you do? Well, we just knew the same people. I mean, you don't try to impress her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Amy, you don't try to, yeah. You just try to be yourself and be cool and be real. She, she could spot it out if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to put on airs or anything, she'll call you out on it. And what do you think you did that really made her think you're the one for this? I think that uh, the other people said no. <laughs> that was it, okay. So <laughs> they went down the list and they came to you. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, I, however you can work it. You know? I have no idea why. <laughs> now, Amy Schumer's like everywhere now. She's like the hot comic. What about her act, what about her comic persona really has made this kind of her moment, do you think? I don't know, I mean, I it's hard for me to say just because, uh, you know, people kind of talk about women in comedy and stuff, but I know a lot of really funny women. I think she just is plain, so she's just so honest, you know? I mean, the movie is so great, and I read it, too. It's just, it's such a, um, it's just a character I've never seen have their own movie before. It's just so, um, like I said, just honest and genuine and deep and kind of warts and all kind of thing, and kind of saying, like, you know, love and people are complicated, you know, and, and just trying to just trying to get in tune. And I feel like that comes across in her stand-up as someone who um, is, just, uh, is just genuine. Well, I know on our show Inside Amy Schumer, she's playing a little bit of a character in, in yeah. her stand-up. And I'm wondering, you saw the real Amy behind the scenes on Trainwreck. What did you see behind the scenes that maybe people who only see the public persona wouldn't realize? She's a very loyal, she's smart. She surrounds herself with really good people, you know? And she's... She's laid back. She's cool. And most of the time, if you talk to her, she's, you know, what did you do last night? Oh, I went and did a set at the cellar, and then I went home and watched Game of Thrones, you know? <laughs> you know? Now, another person who's on, the, on your um, on train wreck, who's, of course, really well known, is LeBron James. And you were instrumental in helping to recruit him to be part of this project? Mm -hmm. How was that? How, did, how, do you, how do you recruit LeBron James? <laughs> every NBA GM wants to know. How do you recruit yeah. J LeBron James to be part of something? Well, he had hosted SNL. And then, um, so I knew him a little from that. And then Judd Apatow said, what if your best friend was LeBron James in the movie? Because I play a sports doctor in the movie. Oh. And I said, yeah, it'd be great. And so we went to a game, Clippers Heat game. And then uh, afterward, the next day, we just, Judd and I just went and had lunch with him. And we just kind of told him about the story. I mean, LeBron's just, you know, he's just a very sweet guy. I know it's weird to say that about LeBron James, but he's a very sweet guy. That's what he's just, oh, wow, that sounds funny, you know. And, and he had a really, he has a really good sense of humor, you know. It's, it's a very, um, an incredibly dry, and very, very smart sense of humor. I mean, the jokes, the things that he was reacting to in that lunch, you know, I remember us saying, like, what if we had an idea where you were kind of cheap? You know, and he thought that was hilarious. That I'm always having my characters always going to pay for the food, and he was, I love that. That's great, you know. So he got our tone. We were all in the same wavelength of what the tone of the comedy was in the movie. There seems to be a connection between the way he reacts to comedy and the way he does in the court, where he's really, he's really uh, sensitive and Very cognizant of, of everyone yeah. who's around him and who needs the ball. And, yeah. and when I watched the video of you and Amy and Judd Apatow. Uh, and LeBron James talking about a possible sequel mm -hmm. to Trainwreck on Funny or Die, I was struck by how quickly he reacted to things. Yeah. He, something would happen, he'd, he'd, he'd sort of get the ball spinning. Was that scripted or was that all kind of improv? Um, Judd and, and I think Kim Schumer and some other people had written out ideas for it, and I think it was kind of... It's kind of like, you know, how you do some of the scenes in the movie. I mean, I don't want to, Amy Schumer wrote a great script. And LeBron, he's just good. He's just, 
he's the thing is that he does is he listens, you know, and he's very intuitive, and he. You know, like what I went to class for, you know, an improv class, they talk about game, you know, it's a, it's so a kind of a corny thing of game and yes and and all this stuff. And LeBron just naturally knew how to do that. You know, if you threw something at him, he would immediately go, right, right, but, you know, yes, but, the, you know, the other thing is that I'm doing that, you know, he w would accept it, you know, and it was, it was really, you know, I, people go to class for that and they can't figure it out. And he just intuitively knew how to do it. Okay, so everyone debates whether Michael Jordan's a better basketball player than LeBron James. Is LeBron James a better actor than Michael Jordan? What do you think? You see, you've seen them both now. I, I haven't worked with... I mean, I, I, I will say that Michael Jordan, though, had to work with animated, you know, things. And, I mean, LeBron did have to work with Amy Schumer, which is not a human. <laughs> but, you know, it was close. But you know, it's different. I, I give Michael Jordan a little, a little, you know, slack because he's he's not acting with real people. Now you're also another huge movie this summer, Inside Out. You play Fear. What about you? Do you think was particularly fearful that made you write for that role? Do you think? I think the Pixar guys. I went and I met them, and they were very sweet, great guys, and uh, they just said, "Who's someone we know who's uh, just an anxious, anxious wreck? Let's get Bill." <laughs> So yeah, yeah, that's how it worked. No, I kind of went in and pitched. I just went and met them. I kind of stalked those guys and said, "I want to be in one of your movies so bad." You know, I went and watched them write. You know, and, and wanted to learn how their process works um, because I think their stories are they're the, like the best at screen story. You know, and they were great. They were it was so cool. And then it was almost like an afterthought. Like, oh, do you want to play Fear? Like, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me the concept behind the IFC series you have going on now, Documentary Now. It's kind of a high concept thing, kind of a parody of documentaries. Let yeah. me know what that's about. So if Seth Meyers and Fred Armisen and I are doing the, the show called Documentary Now, and the idea is that it's a show that's been on for 50 years, showcasing documentaries, kind of like a curated documentary series, um, kind of like American Masters or something like that. And we basically parody documentaries. Um, so we did a Great Gardens parody where Fred and I played the two women from Great Gardens. We did The Thin Blue Line. We did Nanook of the North and all these kind of benchmark documentaries. But we just had a blast. Helen Mirren hosts it. And it's, I don't know, it's been, it, I'm, I'm really proud of it. It, it was, uh, each, each film's its own little separate short film. And, and the director, Reese Thomas, um, and Alex Bruno, the two directors, did such an amazing job at recreating each style, you know? I mean, we wanted it to feel like as if you were watching this show and it felt you were really watching one of these movies and it feels like Ray Gardens or an Errol Morris movie or whatever, and then Fred and I pop up in it, hmm. you know? So everyone else, you know, Jack Black has, is in one episode, John Slattery's in an episode and, and, and some other people, but, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's pretty authentic, which is cool. Well, Bill, thanks a lot for coming to the Wall Street Journal. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks.